Hi, it's Mike here. Welcome to my shop. Thanks for clicking into this video. As some of you might know, I like to build tube amps, guitar amps, and hi-fi stereo systems. I do spend a lot of time in my shop, and while I'm in my shop, I like to listen to the radio and whatever's on my iPod. Now, my existing stereo system in my shop is getting kind of long in the tooth, so I've decided to rebuild it and document it. So what I'm going to do is build a new set of speakers. I'm gonna build a tubed power amp, and I'm also gonna build a preamp as well, which I just completed, so I'll show you what I did there. Now, a preamp allows you to switch between different inputs, so I'm gonna have a CD player, a radio, and my iPod, which I can select between the two. It will give you a volume control, and also provides you some more gain. So the power amp that I'm building requires a preamp to make it function properly, to get enough voltage swings so you get the most output. So let's go have a look at my preamp, and I'll show you what I built and how I put it all together and we'll discuss the circuit. So here's a completed preamp. I made it kind of look old school to kind of give it that industrial feel how you would see kind of these amplifiers and preamps done in the 50s and 60s. It's pretty simple. It has the power on, it has a pilot light, it has a current meter to show how much current the tubes are drawing, it has a volume control and an input selector. So this preamp runs on three tubes. I have an OD3 regulator tube there, and that regulates the voltage to 150 volts. And then I have two 6SN7 tubes, one per channel. And these are very common tubes, and they still make them, and they're readily available. So the chassis is made from scratch. It's made out of aluminum. And I just used machine screws to put it all together. I painted it white. And with the face panel here, I actually painted it black first and used my Cricut machine to make some decals. I put the decals on and then I painted it white and then peeled the decals off. It kind of gives it that industrial look and it turns out really good. I have a separate video on how that all goes together. So please take a look on how the Cricut machine works. So we'll just flip this around here to give you a better view of the back. So I made a separate cover to hide the choke here and you can just unscrew that and you take a look. And then we have the inputs here and then we have the outputs and I have an extra set for a subwoofer if I ever want to. And then I have the common ground here. So if you need to hook that up to the power amp or even a phonograph, they like to have the same ground potential so there's no buzzing and humming. Okay, so before we start monkeying around here, let's see if there's any more residual voltage left in the filter capacitors. And you can see we still have about three volts on there. So what I'm gonna do is we're going to use my capacitor discharge tool and we will just uh, see if we can get all the voltage off again. And so what we'll do is you can watch it here and we will kill all the voltage out of that. So if you don't already have a tool like this, please uh, take a look at my YouTube channel and I have um, a video on how I make this. It's very useful and if you're gonna be making tube apps, make one of these as well. Prepared a really nice schematic for you all and if you're interested, I'll be linking this down in the description below. Uh, it's a very simple uh, schematic and a very simple circuit. Not really too uh, complicated going on here. Um, you can see we have one channel shown and we have the input uh, 6NS7 which is going to be a voltage amplifier and then the second one here on the other half of the triode is a cathode follower and then it goes to the output. So if you follow the signal chain through you'll see that there's only an actual capacitor that's in the whole signal chain. So when it inputs through your source and exits to your amplifier realistically there's only a nice quality capacitor in here and that's that one right there. So we'll just discuss the topology here on this amplifier. So this is the power transformer here, and it's a 300 to 0, 300 center tapped power transformer. And we need all the extra voltage here in order to make the OD3 tube function properly. It needs a lot of compliance. So out of this, I go to a solid state rectification. So I just have two diodes. And then we have the filter caps here. So these are 220 microfarads at 450 volts. I have the, the choke, uh, the coil, and then it goes through some dropping resistors. And then we have these big resistors here help set the, the current for the OD3 rectifier to work properly. And then this regulates it to 150 volts. It goes out of the chassis into the panel meter and back out again. Now this panel meter is mostly for aesthetics, but it does help you to kind of see 
uh, if the tubes are functioning properly and they're biasing functionally, but you don't really need that. I just thought it looked kind of cool. So it comes out of the panel meter and it goes to the tubes. So the tubes operate on this 150 volt DC. So each channel has one tube and the first part of the triode activates as a voltage amplifier and the second part of the triode activates as the cathode follower. So out of the tubes, it goes to the capacitors and to the output. So just give you a quick idea how it works here. So it, your input comes from here, has an input selector here. Um, it has a rod there, has adjustment up there. The wires come up and goes out of the chassis into the potentiometer. And then it comes in left and right channel. And then it has all the resistors just mounted right on the, the tube sockets here. And these set the parameters and the bias of the tube. So this is what is providing us the gain that we need and then it comes out, goes to the capacitor, and then back out again. Here is your filament circuit here. So I have DC rectification on the filament circuit, and then each filament here on each tube is run by DC, and that therefore kind of eliminates any of the AC hum that comes out of the circuit. So it's a pretty simple circuit to make, very low parts count. Pricey items will be, of course, the power transformer, the electrolytic capacitors, and the tubes themselves. So for my chassis, I ended up just using some aluminum extrusion. So this is what they call a C-channel and it's two inches wide. And I use this for the two sides and the back. And then what I also do is I get them to shear me off some uh, aluminum here. So just the normal aluminum sheets. And this would be the top and the bottom. And then I hear it all together with some machine screws. So this is six by 32 machine screws. And then just a normal drill and tap it all out. And for the bigger holes, I use this step bit. So if you don't have a step bit, you should probably think about getting one. They're very handy. Now, if you didn't want to go ahead and build a whole chassis like I did, you could do something similar to like this. All it is is a top plate with a wooden base and everything is just mounted to the top plate. And you can kind of see that. This is just something similar to this. Just go to the metal store and get them to shear you up some 10 inches by 10 inch aluminum plate. And then you can just make your own wood base. This one's just cheap out of plywood for building it, but you can make it out of any nice wood that you want. So some of the parts that I use, this panel meter is just an eBay special, and I'll put a link in the description below on where I got it from. It works pretty good. I got a 20 milliamp one. Circuit barely draws about six milliamps. So anywhere between 10, 15, 20, uh, you'll be fine. So for the six SN7 tubes, I just went with the Sobtech. There's a lot of six N7 tubes you can pick from, you know, really expensive ones from about $15 all the way up to 60, 70, $80. So you can take your pick. I find this circuit very forgiving and I'm not sure if you'd hear a difference between a less expensive tube and a premium tube, but yeah, you know, your ears may vary. So for the OD3 tube, I just went with an NOS tube. Um, it seems to work pretty good. These tubes are really neat. They kind of glow, this kind of bluish pinkish glow. If you didn't want to put the regular tube in, you don't have to. You just modify the power supply to suit accordingly. So this circuit is nothing special. It's been around for a long time. Nothing unique about it. The RCA receiving manual did something similar to this circuit. Vacuum Tube Valley publicized this circuit as well, and it's all over the internet. Even JE Labs, he publicized the circuit as well. His is called the Line Stage. Bottlehead did something similar as well, but they ended up using 12 AU 72s which are a little smaller. They all kind of share the same topology. I kind of took inspiration from all those sources and kind of packed together what I felt would work for me and whatever spare parts I had kicking around. Well, I hope that inspires you to get out there and build your first uh, tube amp project or a similar project like this. Um, if you're new to tube amps, uh, I would recommend doing a preamp circuit. They're actually relatively inexpensive and they're kind of cool to put together. I just started a new thing that's called Buy Me A Coffee and there's a link in the description below. Um, <laughs> I do drink a lot of coffee and I do spend a lot of hours in my shop and editing these videos for you guys. I enjoy doing it and I hope you guys enjoy it too. So please do me a favor and click the link and buy me a coffee. Once again, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. I got a couple more videos coming up on my shop stereo system. As I mentioned, I'm going to be building a power amp, which is going to be a 6L6 amp, and I'll be building some speakers as well.